There's a lighthouse on the hillside that overlooks life's sea. When I'm tossed, the sins how the light that I might see. But the light that shines yeah, in darkness it. now will sorely lead us over. If it was for the lighthouse, this ship would sail no more. And I thank God for the lighthouse. Yeah. I owe my yeah. life to Him. <laughs> for Jesus is the yes. lighthouse, and from the rock of sin, yeah. He shone a light about me that I may clearly see. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me, where would this ship be? Everybody that lives about us said, tear that lighthouse down. Yeah. The big ships don't sail this way anymore. There's no use of it standing around. But my mind goes back to that stormy night. When just in time I saw the light Yes, the light of that old lighthouse That stands up there on the hill And I thank God for the lighthouse I owe my life to Him For Jesus is the lighthouse And from the rock of sin he has shone a light about me that I may clearly see. If it wasn't for the lighthouse, tell me, where would this ship be? <laughs> well, praise God. I thank God for the lighthouse that sits up there on the hill. You see, it's been a beacon for a long, long time. And there's been a lot of people pass by and they've stopped. So I, I thank God for that, you know. Last Sunday morning, yesterday, I walked in and went up in the pulpit. There laid a, a note on the desk with a, a love offering. And it says, thank you for leaving the doors unlocked. Thank you that this place is beautiful. It says, me and my daughters, we live back on the other side of the river. And, but we pass this way every once in a while. And we decided we'd stop and see if the door was unlocked. And so they said, we sure appreciate it. And then they asked us to pray. And so you see, I thank God for the lighthouse. My, my. Because there's a lot of people that stops as they go by. For years and years, we built a church down at Walker's Hill. For years, we, we never locked a door. Always left them unlocked. Finally got to the place that we had to put insurance on the place. And whenever we done that, then we had to lock the doors in order for the insurance to be any account. And so, you see, the devil works every way that he can. He want people coming in there. Why? Because there was a lot of his people that will stop whenever there's nobody there. And they go in. I remember I used to. I would go in and a lot of times I'd walk up front and I'd open up the Bible and I'd read some of all of it. I bet you see, if the door would have been locked, I'd have never done it. I'd have never opened the door. But I'm, thank I'm so thankful today for the lighthouse. And if it had not been for the lighthouse, this ship would be no more. 
I'm positive of that. <laughs> well, because my, I, I never had any idea that I'd ever live to reach 60 years old. I never had no idea. I bet you see, well, yes, I'm a little older than that now. I bet you see, God has taken care of me. And, and I tell people, God took care of me when I didn't have sense enough to try to take care of myself. God took care of me. He kept me in the hollow of His hand. Yes, I was in a lot of dangerous places. I had a lot of close calls. But God... But God seemed like He always brought me through. And so, you see, that's the reason why today that I look back. I see where God brought me from. I see what He's done with me. And I can also see what He made out of me. And I was talking to a lady just a few minutes ago. And I said, you know, I, I can do just a little bit of everything or a little bit of a lot of things. But I said, if I was ever good about anything, I don't know what it was. And so you see, I'm glad that God's still God. And He's still working on me. He's trying to make me what He wants me to be. And so I praise God for His mercy and for His grace. So you pray for us, and God will just bless the broadcast. And I, Brother Roscoe and Wildor, I'm going to take a vacation for a while. Brother Ron's going to come and help me till he gets tired. Then we'll see if we'll, what we can find. Maybe we'll find somebody to help him out a little bit. And so we just praise God uh, that God is still God yet today. And he knows what you have need of. And he says, I'll supply your needs according to my riches in glory by Christ Jesus. What does that do for you? Makes me want to raise my hands in the air and shout. Praise His holy name because He's so merciful. So merciful. So gracious that He is. And that He doesn't reward us according to our sins and our iniquities. But according to His love. His great love. How love, how great is His love? So great that He was willing to lay down His life that we could have life and have it more abundantly. Well, praise God. We're glad that we can come today and share with you the love of God. And just to tell you that He loves you unconditionally. You might be the worst drunk that there are, but He loves you unconditionally. You may have been in some places that whenever you got out, you wonder how you got out. You see, that's the love of God. God brings us out of a lot of places like that. And he watches over us. Why? Because he said, it's not my will that any should perish. Doesn't want you going to hell. He wants you to come to heaven. Why? Because his inheritance is in the saints. My, my. And you see, the dead, uh, they don't praise God. uh, But you see, the living does. And he says, I'm I'm the God of the living. I'm the God of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, the God of the living, not the God of the dead. And so you see, yes, one of these days we'll lay this old body down, but we're not really dead. Why? Because we that are saved are asleep in Christ. And one day, one day, when he steps out on the clouds of glory, the trump of God will sound And he says, the dead in Christ shall rise first. My, my. And so you see, uh, God is still working on people. He's still trying to get people saved. Still trying. My, it's not hard to get saved. I I would say that, uh, and it's not hard to stay saved if you'll be obedient to God. And do what God wants you to do. He says the ways of a transgressor is hard. Those that profess and don't live the way that they know they ought to, then you see it's hard for them. Why? Because they're transgressing of the laws of God. And they're trying to do things that they know that's just not right. Well, praise God. 
And so I'm glad today that God's still God. And so you pray that God would have his way. I want to send a broadcast out to all of those that are sick and those that are afflicted. And we want to remember Brother Roscoe and Wilda, and we just praise God for them, for all that they've done and all that they're still doing. And so I know today that and God is still God and that he's still looking unto you to come to him before it's too late. He's expecting you to come. He's expecting you to open the door whenever he stands there and he knocks. That's right. He's expecting you to open up. He's expecting you to call on his name while there's still time because the time is drawing short. I know we don't believe that, but honey, it's a fact that time is drawing short. And so uh, we want to pray with you and pray for you that God will just reach down and touch you. Your heart will be opened up and you'll be lifted up, able to go down the highway of holiness, uh, rejoicing because Jesus is still alive. And so we praise God for that today. Father, reach down today and touch those that are lost and undone. Heavenly Father, there's so many of them. And the devil makes them believe that you can't forgive them, that you won't forgive them, that you don't want nothing to do with them. But God, I know better because I know where I was at. And I know that one Sunday morning you pass by and you says, today is your day. <laughs> and I thank you, Father, that I looked up and you looked down. <laughs> well, and I thank you that you saved me, not partially, but fully saved me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. And you forgive me of all of my sins. And I was justified. And I thank you, Father, because you're God. And you know how to work with people. And we thank you for your long suffering, for your tenderness. And we thank you, Heavenly Father, yes, God. And we know sometimes that you speak very firmly to us. And so I praise you. Now, Father, I pray that you'd reach out and touch those that are sick, those that are afflicted. Heavenly Father, you said it, uh, that the anointing uh, destroys the yoke. And so I'm Praying today, God, I let that anointing I would flow across the airways into that sick room. And God, where people are at, into that bed where people are laying, into that chair where people are sitting. Heavenly Father, I let they would feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit going, working through their body and God to lift them up and to give them peace. Now, Father, bless the service tonight. Use it for your glory. And we'll thank you in the name of Jesus. And amen. All right, Brother Ron's going to come back and sing us another song. Jesus, 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 there's just something about that name. Thank you, Lord. Jesus, Master, Savior, like the fragrance after the rain. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdoms will all pass away, but there's something about that name. Yes, yes, yes. Jesus, 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 there's just 
something about that name. Master, Glory. Savior, Glory. Jesus, like the fragrance after the rain. Jesus, 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 let all heaven and earth proclaim. Kings yes, yes, and kingdom yes. we all pass away. But there's something about that name. Woo. My, my, my. I'm glad that there are something about that name. You know, I was going to read some scripture out of Psalm 100, but God gave me a verse of scripture. Well, Brother Ron was singing that. You can find it over in the book of Acts. He says, how that God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. You think of that. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Well, when was Jesus anointed with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, and power? You remember reading the scriptures, and I'm sure that a lot of you do, that whenever John the Baptist was out there in the river of Jordan, and he looked up and he saw Jesus coming, and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which come to take away the sin of the world. And Jesus walked up to John and he says, it behooves you to baptize me. But John says, I have need to be baptized of you. Jesus said, let that be true. But you're going to baptize me today. John led him out into the river and whenever he went under the water, it says there descended from heaven the Spirit of God in the form of a dove, and it lighted upon Jesus. And they heard a voice from heaven say, This is my beloved Son. Hear ye him. You see, Jesus was born like no other human being. He didn't have an earthly father. The Holy Spirit was his father. And you see, he didn't have a sin nature. That was the difference between him and us today. You see, everybody that was born after Adam had a sin nature. But Jesus didn't have a sin nature. Why? Because he didn't have an earthly father. Joseph wasn't his father. And so get that caused from a lot of problems. But you see, God anointed him with the Holy Ghost and power. Everything that Jesus done as he walked the seashores of Galilee he did it as a man filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. All the miracles that was performed, he done it as a man filled with the Holy Spirit. That's the reason why you read in the chapter, 14th chapter, chapter of the Gospel of John, you find out Jesus said, now you see all of these things that I do, you can do these and greater things because... I'm going to the Father. And he tells us back in the book of Mark, and he said, now if you believe 
if you believe, all things are possible to them that believe. You see, if we've got the faith to believe, God is able to perform anything that we ask him for. Now, there's been times when people have asked me to pray for things, and I look at them and I say, I, I don't have the faith to do that. You say, you tell people, yes. Well, I'd pray for me. I did pray for them. But you see, Jesus didn't have to worry about that. Why? Because all power was given unto him. And you read in the book of Matthew, I don't know long about chapter 5, I believe it is. I'm not really pausing. You know, you could find it though because it's right there close. And he says that there was a leper that came and fell down before him and looked at him and he says, Lord, if you will, you can make me whole. Do you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, I will. I, honey, that leprosy dried up just in the snap of your finger. Why? I, because Jesus spoke the very word uh, that he needed to hear. You see, that leper had faith. He said, if you will, you can make me whole. And Jesus said, I will. I will. I'm not sure. Last week, I believe it was, that as we were out at Roscoe's and Wilda's, she had something wrong with her and she couldn't hardly get up and down. And whenever we got ready to leave, we prayed for her. You see, I'm a believer. And I believe that people will be healed. I believe that. No, I'm not a healer. I didn't say that. I said I'm a believer. And I believe that whenever we pray for people, we ought to see the evidence of the faith that, uh, that it comes forth. No, everybody that I pray for is not healed. Well, how come? I don't know. I, I don't know. When God heals somebody, I don't take no credit for it. If God sees fit not to do it, uh, there's a lot of times that people uh, are sick and if they was well, uh, they would walk off and leave God uh, just in the snap of a finger. But as long as they've got to depend on Him, uh, they'll walk with Him and they'll do what He wants them to do. Uh, but you see, if they was well and healthy, uh, they wouldn't be doing that. And, and so you see, you wonder sometimes, well, it seems like that these people, when they get sick, I know that. Uh, I've seen it in my own family. Uh, I, uh, that people that whenever uh, times was pretty good and they're getting along and they're making money, um, uh, uh, they just walk off and leave God. Uh, but when things got bad, uh, times got hard, uh, the first thing they would do uh, would be go back to church uh, and they'd fall down at an altar of prayer and begin to seek God. Uh, you see, God is our prosperity. It's not the world. It's not what I can do. I'm not what you can do. But it's what God sees fit to do for us. Now you read 3 John, verse number 2. He says, I wish him of all things that you would prosper and be in health as your soul prospers. No, don't go to throwing dirt in the air and say, that's not for today. My Bible says that Jesus Christ are uh, the same yesterday, today, and forever. <coughs> so you see how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power who went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. Can't you imagine when Jesus walked down there out next to the pool of Bethesda and there was a blind man? A blind man. My, he was born blind. Had never seen his family. 
And Jesus anointed his eyes with clay. He took spittle and he made clay out of dust and he anointed his eyes. And he said to him, go down to the pool of Siloam and wash. And the man went down to the pool and he washed his eyes and he was able to see. Able to see. You see, that man had faith. He had faith in the Word of God. When Jesus said to him, go, he didn't hesitate. He went. Give you something else to think about. <coughs> We've heard it a lot of times. Jesus said to his disciples, I want you to get in the boat and go to the other side. Go to the other side. But whenever he, they got out there, uh, there was a storm came. Jesus wasn't nowhere around. After a while, they saw somebody coming to them, walking on top of the water. They thought they'd seen a spirit. They was afraid. But John looked up and he says, It's the Lord. And Peter stepped up and he says, Jesus, if it's you, bid me to come. Jesus just stretched out his hand and said, come, come. Peter stepped out of the boat. I can imagine that he didn't do it in a great big hurry. But he stepped out of the boat and he went walking toward Jesus. And whenever he got out there and you see, then we begin to condemn Peter because the wind started to blow. And he got his eyes off of Jesus and looking at the waves uh, that was coming and he began to sink. And he stood and he took his hand up and he said, Lord, save me. And Peter and Jesus looked at him uh, and whenever they took one more step, they were in the boat. Uh, Jesus looked at him and said, why did you doubt? Why did you doubt? But honey, here's the thing I want you to think about. Now, we condemn Peter a lot of times. May lost his faith. Maybe he did. But there was 11 more people, in 11 more men in that boat, and not a one of them got out. You see, this is what happens. A lot of times, people will try to do what God wants them to do. Yes, and they may fail somewhat. But listen, and we laugh at them, and we condemn them, and we make all kinds of fun of them. But how many times has God spoke to us and said, I want you to do it? We wouldn't even try. We wouldn't even try. Would we have stepped out of the boat? I doubt it. Why? Because the lake was deep. Yes, Jesus was there. But would, would we have looked to him or would we depend on ourselves? You see, self gets us in a lot of trouble sometimes. Well, because we like to think that I've got a handle on this thing. But honey... When you're serving God, you don't have a handle on nothing. You walk by faith. You live by faith. By faith. By faith. All things are possible by faith. And it tells us in Hebrews 11 and 6, he says, Without faith, it's impossible to please God. you got to have faith. God is able to do whatever we ask Him to if we've got the faith to believe that God will do it. If God will do it. Huh. So you see, God's still God. God's still God. And He's a mighty God. He doesn't want us to try to, own, own our, to do these things on our own. And you see, a lot of times we do. We want to do it on our own. But we need to know God is the one that does the work. It's not us. It's God. And whenever we get out of the Spirit and begin to walk in the flesh, we can just say, I'm going to fail. Well, our time's come and going again today. Sometimes it passes awful fast. Father, in the name of Jesus... 
reach out and touch those that stands in need. God, because we realize that it takes the power of the Holy Spirit to accomplish anything in this whole world, we can't do it. God, we can't do it. But I thank you that you can. And I thank you that you'll work with us and you'll work through us uh, uh, to accomplish those things uh, uh, that you would have us to do. Bless the service, and we'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. It's our prayer until this time next week.